recognize this situation? You're coming from the supermarket and you didn't want to buy a bag and you're left with all this super unhandy situation. And especially when you're not allowed to fly with liquids, you have to buy all these products, so you're not allowed to fly with shampoo, no toothpaste, no creams, no sunscreen. Hello, South Africa. <laughs> this wasn't the only thing that bothered me two years ago when I started my graduation process. I'll take you to the supermarket where I found these products. And we're going to the aisle with all the household products and cosmetics. Now, please pick a product that you really like. It can be your toothpaste, your shampoo. If you really like your cleaning detergent, that's fine too. Now, feel the weight of the product in your hand. Have you ever wondered what's in that product? I'll tell you. Whatever product that you picked, there's about 80% to 95% of water in all of these products. And it's not just my energy that gets drained by carrying these products from the supermarket to the stage. It also means that four out of five trucks filled with these products are basically transporting water across the globe. And not only that, it also means that if you see this packaging, 95% of, of plastic to contain water, which we're not using. So, actually, it, was, it used to be normal because 80 years ago when we invented these products, the access to clean water was different from now. But hey, 80 years have passed and the recipes have changed, but we still, nobody realized that we're transporting water from the supermarket, from the factory, to homes that actually have water. So I started Googling for a solution, and I found this. It's a block of soap that actually works as a shampoo. And I really wanted this solution to work for me, and I tried it, but it didn't. It, the comfort was different from a normal shampoo, and besides that, it made my hair look like straw. <laughs> so I had this vague idea of what a solution could be, but I realized that I never had a talent for chemistry, so going for this would be quite a challenge. So I contacted all the people in the industry that I could find and thought that could help to find a solution. And uh, I explained them my vague idea and my vision, but unfortunately, most of them didn't respond. And here's the reply of a big multinational that did respond. And the reason why they didn't want to collaborate was because they thought that consumers weren't waiting for this because they had tried it with laundry detergents. Now, you probably know these labels. Who of you actually reads these? I don't, not to check if the doses have changed since the last time that I was buying this product, so I always use almost the same dose. So this was their reason to not do it. But actually, I don't know whose fault it is that the consumers don't read their labels. Is it really the consumer who's lazy? Or is it the designer's fault who didn't come up with a more in, inter, uh, intuitive dosing system? Anyways, I didn't want to fight and claim that I had the solution because it was just a fake idea and didn't know where this was going. So I just smiled and waved and continued on my own. Well together with my science disability. <clears throat> and it was a lovely process because actually there was no R&D uh, obstacles because there was no chemistry research. So I could just focus on creating the most ideal product ever um, and on the 25 to 20%, which is not water, basically. And I created this capsule out of these ingredients and at home, you put the capsule in a reusable bottle, you add water, shake it up, and you have just your product as you're used to, same quality, same viscosity, but without transporting and packing all this water. So here's the end result. Thank you.
So here's the end result. It's basically a set of all kinds of products that work like that. And um, I won't explain you the whole design now, because that would be a rather long and boring story. But we're going, I'll explain you the shampoo bottle. And we're going back to this aisle and, of, with, with all the shampoo bottles. And do you see all these super bright colors? And every bottle has at least three of your most hated fonts. And <laughs> if you're lucky, it also has this juicy fruit or coconut explosion to ensure you that it's a very natural product. But this definitely attracts your attention, and it, apparently it makes us even buy these products. But would you also buy this product if you would buy it for a lifetime? Would you buy the same bottle? I don't think so, and I think the existence of soap dispensers prove us that you wouldn't. So it made the branding of the bottle much more subtle, and the shape of the bottle much simpler. So that, it, and um, of course, I look for high quality ingredients so that in the end, even though this product asks for a little more effort from the consumer, the design of the bottle and the weight of his groceries would be extra assets for the consumer that would stimulate him to buy it, even though he's not the most sustainable consumer you can imagine. But yeah, I had this science disability, and I, but I did want to show people what this project could look like when it worked. So I created this little movie of the product in use, hoping to, um, to, sh yeah, to show the industry and consumers what it could, to convince them. So I graduated, and a few months later, I was able to sh uh, exhibit my project during the Dutch Design Week. And a Dutch television channel passed by and made this little movie of me explaining the project. And somehow this exploded online, and I got overwhelmed with consumers and industry and retailers who wanted to buy these products, which weren't existing. <laughs> so, surprise, surprise, about, it, it all showed that consumers were looking for attractive green alternatives, despite what the industry had told me that they weren't. About a week later, the same industry that I had called before to help me asked for greener, attractive alternatives. So my first time in a shampoo factory was actually after my graduation, which is what they call the design process reversed. And they started asking all these chemistry-related questions, and I literally had no idea. <laughs> so I realized that I still had a really long way to go. And then they offered me this collaboration, but I realized that their motivation to do this was different from mine, and that this wouldn't take me to the project that I wanted it to be. And besides that, I would be dependent on their persistence to create this project, while well, they had shown that they're used to thinking in problems rather than in solutions. Last but not least, their design values were very different from mine. So fortunately, I had won a prize, a few prizes, that enabled me to create my own team. And I found a co-founder named Ilse Kweital, and together we started this journey, and we found several science universities to collaborate with. And we're not held back by year, years of research and assumptions based on this, because we don't have any experience. And it's a long, long process indeed, but we're very far already, and we hope to launch the first ever dissolvable shampoo capsule by the beginning of 2020. <laughs> <laughs> But we will reverse the process. We don't skip the industry completely because we do want to make an impact. So after our lunch, we'll get back to them with our findings and help them to create cleaner, more sustainable products. So that in the end, if you imagine yourself standing in front of that household product aisle again, it will be 80% smaller. Thank you. Thank you.